Okay, so this is going to be an attempt at a tutorial for hob sliding in the Insane Trilogy. Uh, as a disclaimer, this is not really an easy technique to like make a tutorial of because the like the premise of hob sliding is extremely simple. Uh, but the actual execution ranges anywhere from tricky to very difficult depending on the situation and it's like it differs like depending on where you're doing it in a run so really all I can really do is explain what hob sliding is show off some examples of like how to do it and just give some like really minor things but really you're not going to be able to watch just simply watch this video and learn how to do hob sliding it's something you have to do like to learn it you have to try it yourself watch other runs of people doing it and just like it'll eventually just come together over time and just building the muscle memory but like it's so it's such a simple thing but it's it's difficult to execute and it like it's a very significant thing though so i would recommend learning it sooner rather than later but it's not something where like you need to know how to do this to be able to get decent times it's just like it shaves off minutes at like higher levels so like think of it similar to like it's not the same technique but it serves a similar purpose to like zigzagging in the original games but anyway so um i'm gonna use turtle woods for this uh tutorial because turtle woods i think has some of the like the best examples of like doing hob sliding uh in many respects turtle woods is actually a good opening level for from like a spectator's perspective but First thing, like, is n knowing what exactly hob sliding is. So, hob sliding is essentially so you know if you do a slide and then a spin, you just get a slide spin like this. And during this slide spin, you can jump like that. So if you're able to jump, and then well, not like that. So if you're able to jump during the slide spin and land before uh, the spin ends. Then you get this like noticeable uh, increase in speed. I don't think we ever figured out what exactly causes this, but I know Roach theorized that um, what happens is that if you land while you're spinning, the game doesn't recognize that you've actually landed, so you maintain your falling speed, which I think is a very sound theory, but it's never been like concretely proven. So I would say like for we don't know for certain what exactly it is, but I think that's a good theory. But anyway, and it's a very similar premise to the Mock Tornado in Crash 3 NST, uh, which is done with the uh, the Death Tornado spin, but it is it is a different technique. It's done in a very similar fashion, but uh, they function slightly differently, and Mock Tornadoing is a lot easier. So, yeah, basically to do a hop slide, you do a slide spin, and you jump during the slide spin, and before you land, you... Uh, or uh, before the spin ends, you land. So what makes this difficult is that because of how quick the spinning animation is, you can't do this on flat ground. Like, you, it ends too quickly. So you have to do this on a hill or an elevated platform, in, like in most cases. There are also some cases where you can do it under like a stack of three or more crates, but those aren't as frequent. So, yeah. I mean, really, there really isn't much else I can say about hob sliding aside from like showing it off. I guess one thing to note is that when you like, when you jump during a slide spin, if you turn in the air, you actually get like slightly less height. So I find that for a lot of hob slides, it's easier to like do a slide spin and then turn slightly. Oh, and the other really important thing is making sure you like properly chain your slide spins. So pretty much what you have to do is that after you get a hob slide going to keep it going. You have to like pretty much chain your slide spins so that there's no there's no ending between the spin and the next slide. And this is done just by like slightly buffering the the slide after the spin where like you hit R1 or circle, whichever one you use again, just a little bit before the spin actually ends. And this is really just something that comes down with timing. And this is probably the biggest advantage hob sliding has over mock tornado is that mock tornado will only last for as long as the death tornado spin lasts hob sliding lasts as long as you can keep this chain going so yeah um i'm really not sure what else i can say about the trick aside from like showing it off in turtle woods so like there i've been doing it on this hill you can also do it on this uh like this little whatever this is 
And like like I said, it's tricky. Like even the even the best runners of this game have trouble doing hob sliding, but there, like I got off of that. So this mud pit right here is actually probably the easiest hob slide in the entire trilogy. Or at least in my opinion it is. Um because the mud actually lowers your jumping height, which makes it really easy to hit the hill. But yeah. And then you'll see here that, oh well, if I can jump. Yeah. There, there was another hob slide. Um, the, like, if you get the hob slide, you'll notice it immediately because you'll go much faster than, like, a regular slide spin. Like, this is a regular slide spin. And you see, like, whenever Crash spins, he, like, slows down. But if you get a hob slide, he doesn't slow down. So, oh, yeah. This is one of the trickier ones in the level. But there, like, he's just, like, constantly going fast. This is a harder one. That's, this is probably a good example of, uh... Yeah, of, like, turning during the jump. Makes this one a lot easier to hit, but even then it's still a tricky one. Another thing to know is that in most cases, if you miss a hob slide, it's not worth it to go back and try it again. Because the amount of time it saves is not the same as like the amount of time it would take to try it again. But here, here's another example of hob slide. You can do it off of some scenery, like I just did it off of that rock. And then there are some levels in Crash 2 where you can actually do it off of the ending tunnels. These ones are a little hard just because the height is pretty noticeably higher. Yeah. But yeah, if you get it, you can just play through it like this. It's not actually that useful in 100% or 102% or because you have to stop here and wait on the gem anyway. But it's useful for grabbing the blue gem. Um, but yeah, that's really... I don't know what else I can really say about hob sliding aside from like... Um... It is something I recommend learning early on, but it's not something you really need. The only, as far as I know, the only technique or the only strat in the game that is 100% like reliant on hob sliding where it's not possible without it is the early Turtle Woods 1 cycle in Crash 2 102, where you do Turtle Woods like a couple minutes into the run, which saves about, I would say, 45 seconds to a minute. So it's not like a major time save you need if you're starting out, but it's like. It's a very important one if you're going for like a top time. And uh hob sliding like it differs per situation because like how you approach the hob slide depends on if it's a hill, if it's an elevated platform, if it's a if it's a stack of 3 crates. Um and the height of the hill or the elevated platform out as well. Like the hills in Turtle Woods are like really well set up and also like the elevated platforms in Boneyard like really lend themselves to hop sliding but there's ones in like Crash Dash which are like so obnoxiously annoying that even I don't go for them a lot and it's like it really differs per level so really the best way to learn hop sliding is like even after watching this video you have to know, like know what hop sliding is know the execution of it and like, honestly, just, like, watch runs, watch people do hob sliding, see what they can do, and then just try it yourself and practice it for a while. There's really no other way to learn it, aside from constantly doing it and building the muscle memory. Like, um, I'd say there's only, like, a handful of people who are super consistent at hob sliding. I would, it would be, like, me, uh, Jay Hobbs, obviously, he's the one who found it. Um, uh, Cameron and Roach might be consistent at it, I'm not sure. I haven't watched them do it enough. But it's really, it's something you have to just learn with time and like watching runs, even watching time trials to see like where you can do it is a good way to learn it. Like I've watched uh, time trial runs to figure out new places to do hob sliding. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's really, I really don't know what else I can say about hob sliding. It's a, like I said, it's a very simple premise where you just slide spin and you land before the spin ends. Um, but executing it is tough. It definitely like, it's one of the hardest tricks in NST, for sure. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this. Uh, let me know if there's any other tutorials you want me to do. And I'll see what I can do. Alright, thanks for watching.